Hey, it's Florian. Today I want to share a short clip with you from the interview I did with Greg LeSeur on what we learned from over 71 day surf clinics for the 30 day surf challenge. In the interview, Greg and I discuss two of the most important aspects you need to understand to transform your surf. All right, so I'm here with Greg today, and we're going to discuss what we learned from over 71 day surf clinics. Now, we, before we get into the details, I just want to point out that I don't think there's anybody on the planet who has fixed more serves in the last two to three years of club level players than Greg has. And he's really been putting in the hours and, and trying to optimize and, and really just been working with players. And, and yeah, it's been phenomenal to see the results that come in via email, the testimonials and everything. So great job on that, Greg. And why don't you kick it off and just kind of you know, start the discussion on what what did you learn over these past two to three years? What works and what doesn't, and so forth. Yeah, you know, Florian, thank you. Um, you know, I think one of the main things is also the mindset that people come into it with. Um, you know, we've had a lot of discussions about this idea of the process versus the outcome, and I think that's really one of the key things um, that helps people to really achieve great results is to be able to let go of what's happening on the other side and focus on what they're actually doing with their body. I think that's that's one of the key things there, and it's very difficult for people to do that. Um, but the ones that are able to achieve that, they seem to have the, the best results. I also think, too, is for people to go easy on themselves. You know, I think to put things in perspective, you know, a lot of players come to us, they've been serving a certain way for two, three, even four decades, and trying to get something right away within the first two or three tries is really not really um, realistic. So I think having these realistic expectations and, and having that sort of long-term approach, so understanding that, hey, I may not get on the first one, but um, knowing that it will come with, with enough uh, correct repetitions. And, you know, it's funny enough, we, we did a clinic, uh, I did one with Ian, and we actually uh, had rain. And we ended up taking people inside, and we did a lot of work inside these racquetball courts. And what was very interesting was we actually had better results off the tennis court than we did on the court. We found that people were able to just hit the ball into the wall and not worry about where the ball was going. And we found when we took them back outside, immediately their, their focus switched from, the, from what they were doing to what the ball was doing. And we, we saw an immediate uh, sort of change or regression. So, you know, that, that the idea of that process uh, versus outcome, but also being going easy on yourself and having realistic ex expectations and time frames. Interesting that you say that, um, because for years I've been telling people when they come to me, I've always been telling them, you know, how fast you're going to get this really depends on how much you can focus on the process um, or how result oriented you are. And of course, when somebody shows up, you know, they can't change where they are at that moment, right? Some some people are just a lot more process-oriented than others. I think it has a lot to do with their occupation as well sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, so some people can just really, you know, focus in on the process and they just have that, and others have to work more on that. But that's, that's definitely a huge factor that I've also um, seen over the years. And in terms of the expectations, you know, I think we should talk about uh, the goal of the clinic, and you and I have talked about this quite a bit, um, you know, if we have a one day serve clinic, the goal really is to get um, the player to the point where they can hit good serves with the new technique, right? They, but they can't do it consistently. So, but, mm -hmm. but, you know, we have now, like we've taken you to the point where you have hit several serves with a new technique and you felt, okay, this is a lot better than anything I've done before. If I get this right, these two or three things I'm working on. This is a lot better, and this is where I need to go. And so, you know, our goal is to get you there in the in in that one day, and to hit, of course, to hit as many as you can there. But then they have to go home, and they have to put the repetitions in to make it permanent. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's where that whole muscle memory um, discussion comes in. That you know we've been having recently with Archie Dan Smith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think um, you know as you're saying the 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 idea of of getting the information you need in the clinic, being able to replicate it and to be able to actually do it, but then to take it um, away from the clinic and keep repeating it to reinforce that. I think that's where we see the people have the most success is, is the ability to, to go out there and continue to work on it. Mm -hmm. 
And what would you say the players that succeed after the clinic do more or better than um, the players that maybe come to the clinic, hit some good serves at the end of the clinic, but then they kind of go back to their old um, habits when they go home? What, what are the differences there? Well, I think the, the key difference is that the people that succeed are the ones that are able to slow things down. Um, you know, I, you know, in the recent clinics, we've been doing a lot more shadow swings and I find that, you know, the people that are able to do the shadow swings and, but do it correctly, it makes such a key difference to how they can then leave the clinic because, you know, if you cannot do it when the ball's not there, I don't know how you can expect yourself to do when the ball is there because there's certainly there's no time and now you've got to put the ball in a little box, you've got to get over the net. There's so many other th factors that come into it. So the key is to be able to really master that shadow swing first because that really um, uh, helps demonstrate that you really understand what you've got to do. And I think, you know, uh, you know, reading Archie's book, he mentions the Tai Chi shadow swing and actually doing it really slowly. And by not rushing through it, by doing it slowly, you're really demonstrating that you really know what you've got to be doing. So I think, um, you know, that that part there is, is is so critical for anyone is when you're mastering a new stroke is to be able to just shadow swing it first without the ball, but also to really be able to slow that down and still do mm -hmm. it correctly. And also, if you do it slowly enough and you do it in front of a reflection of a mirror, you know, that's where in the clinics we'll be filming, we'll film shadow swings. You can also see where that break down point may be. And it's much easier to then correct it. And you're better off trying to uh, spend more time in the beginning where you are demonstrating it correctly. So then it actually will save you time going forward. Yeah, it's very interesting. Um, Archie talks a lot about the shadow swings. You know, I did the interview with him actually yesterday. And uh, we, we've been saying that for years and, and been preaching it, the, the fact that if you do the five to 10 minutes of shadow swings at home, you know, after you come to us and you keep doing that, um, that it makes all the difference in the world. And what Archie actually said is when he first signed up for the serve blueprint, he um, heard me talk about the shadow swings and the progressions, but he said his first reaction was, ah, I don't really need that. I don't want to do that. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll just move forward to the, to the other stuff. And that's actually the process he went through. And then he came around and now he's the biggest advocate of the shadow swings and, uh, I just think that's very interesting. I think that, so we have a common theme there of players that just for whatever reason feel that they don't need to do them, but it makes all the difference in the world. Okay, so now you have an idea of how important it is to really focus on the process when you make these technical changes and then to also really slow things down and work with daily shadow swings. The great news is that a lot of this can be done in the comfort of your own home and you can transform your serve going to the court only a few times per week when you put in the work at home. The latest research in muscle memory development has shown that a focused 30-day practice period is extremely effective if you do the daily drills. Registration for the 30-day surf challenge, however, closes in a couple of days. So if you want to turn your surf from a liability into a real weapon, just like these players, then go ahead and register right now. We're looking forward to helping you transform your surf.